Hello, in this video, I'm showing you how to install the Hive mini wireless thermostat onto a traditional system. That's where you have that large hot water tank, you have additional controls and programmers to run the system. So I'm briefly gonna go through all the controls that you get on your system. So you'll then know where the receiving it fits in with those controls. Because of course there are places where you can and cannot wire this receiving it in. And when you remove that cover from the wiring center, quite often there's a big mess of wires inside and it makes it really hard to try and work out where to wire the receiving it in. But of course, I'm gonna go through the wiring in detail so you'll know whether to install the receiving it into the wiring center, the programmer, or possibly even the old room thermostat. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to pair the two units together. And if you're having trouble getting them to connect, then of course, I'm gonna show you how to do a factory reset, which should get them connected. Now, if you wanna install this Hive thermostat onto a combination boiler, then I made a separate video all about doing that because the wiring is completely different. But if you have a separate timer on that combination boiler, then you may find this video useful because obviously I go through how to wire it into a timer. Now, if you do wanna use your smartphone to set times and temperatures to control your central heating and you haven't got a Hive hub, then you're gonna need this other pack here, which has got the hub in it, and then you'll be able to link it to your smartphone. But I'm gonna make a separate video all about doing that. Just before I get on with the video, I wanna quickly let you know I've made another video, which is all about this unit. So what's inside the box, because there's no screws or wall plugs in here, the stand options you can use, how to use the menus once you set it up, and again, more information about wiring it up. If you wanna watch that video, I'll leave it in the cards above now, and of course you can find it down in the description, where there's also lots of other really helpful links to other videos I've made. Right, now let's get on with this video. Now here is your traditional system. Now these are all the components that you're gonna have if you have a traditional system. You may actually have more controls, but this is what you'd have just in a standard system. We have the mains power switch to turn the system on and off. We have a cylinder thermostat, and that will be on your hot water tank and will control how hot your water gets. We then have our wiring center where everything is wired into. We have a timer or a programmer to turn our central heating on and off. Then we have a room thermostat. Now you may not actually have a room thermostat, but it is a building regulation to have one and it makes the system way more efficient having one. And obviously that's the job we're gonna do is to install the wireless hive thermostat and replace this old one if you have one. Over here we have a pump. Now if you have a system boiler, then the pump will be inside the boiler and you might even have additional pumps. And just above the pump, we have the mid position valve, or you may have zone valves. And again, depending on your system, you may actually have more valves to control different parts of your system. And finally, down here, we have the boiler. So I've just brought a wire down there, and then this is where your boiler may be. Now I've got all these components together, but of course, you may have your programmer downstairs, and your room thermostat is in the hallway, your boiler may be in the kitchen, and all the other controls may be upstairs in the airing cupboard on the landing where you have the hot water tank. Now I've already fixed the hive receiving it to the wall, and I've already put a wire on it. Now I just need to decide where I'm gonna wire it in on this system. Now, before I do any work on the system, I wanna make sure that the power is turned off. You can see my programmer is on now. I've got my green light on for my hot water, and I can also turn the central heating on. Now I'm gonna turn the power off. I'm gonna make sure that all the lights go out on the programmer, telling me that the power is now off. I'm also gonna remove the fuse to make sure that it can't accidentally get turned back on. And there we go, that's the fuse now removed. Now the power's off, if you've got a volt stick like I have, I can just turn that on and I can just check that I haven't got any power on the system. This is my mains power coming in and I can tell that's got power, okay? And I know the rest of the system has no power, so I'm all good to go. Now, like I said, I've already fitted the receiver unit, so let's take a look inside there. So all we need to do is undo the two screws on the bottom, then I just need to hinge the bottom forward and then lift the unit up. So on the receiving here, I have a live and a neutral, and I have the two switch wires on terminals one and three, and I also have an earth wire. 
Now, if you're wondering how I know which terminals to use, on the back of the receiving it, there is a small wiring diagram just here. So like I said, I've already cut the wires to the right length and I'm gonna wire the receiving it into the wiring center. But I could also wire it into the programmer because all the connections that I need are in there as well. So like I said, I have a live wire, I have a neutral wire, I've got my switch wires on black and gray, and then I've also got my earth wire, which is green and yellow. And the earth wire is just to protect this bit of flex in case it got damaged. But first of all, we need to remove the room thermostat and see where that is wired into. That's if you have a room thermostat. And of course, we're gonna be replacing it with this Hive wireless thermostat. So first of all, I need to find out where the old room thermostat is wired into. And you can see on this system, it's wired into the wiring center. So let's take a look inside there. So I undo the screw and take the cover off. And then we see there is a whole load of wires inside here. And it looks pretty complicated. And that's because it is. But when you break it down bit by bit, it is fairly straightforward. But if you're in any doubt, then don't mess around with it. Call a gas registered engineer to come and fit the thermostat for you. Now here's a wiring diagram of this traditional system. And when you have a mid position valve, it's called a Y plan. And you can download my plans from my website. So let's just see if we can follow our wiring through so you can understand what we're trying to do. So here's the mains power coming into the system. So it comes into our wiring center and then that power is then divided around the components on the system. So I always like to think of electrical wiring as being like a piece of string. The electricity comes in one end of the string, it goes along the string and it comes out the other end of the string. And if that string gets cut anywhere, then it stops the flow of electricity. So let's see if we can follow this circuit through. We have our live wire coming in here. It goes into the wiring center where it goes into the live terminal. And then the live comes out and it comes down this wire here, down into the programmer because the programmer needs power to run. So we've got a live coming in there. We've also got a neutral wire and that's to create a circuit so the programmer can actually run. Now the live wire also gets divided inside the programmer where it goes to the hot water switch and the central heating switch. And of course the central heating switch is the one that we are interested in. So let's just take a quick look inside the programmer and see what wires are inside there. So let's just undo the screw and remove the programmer. Now, once again, on the back of the programmer, there's a wiring diagram telling us exactly which wires should go where. So we've got the live and a neutral to run the programmer and the live comes across to run the hot water and the central heating. And we are looking for central heating on. And on this programmer, it's on terminal four. Just note that the wiring inside your programmer may be different. So let's follow our live circuit through. So we've got the live coming in. It goes across on the switch when the central heating is switched on and it comes across and comes out on terminal four. So then we've got a brown wire here that comes back down here. It goes back into the wiring center where it connects onto this terminal here and then it comes across on the top. You see there's a link wire at the top there. It goes across and then it comes down into our room thermostat. And if we follow that room thermostat wire down, that then comes down, it goes into the room thermostat and it goes through the room thermostat and then it comes back again, back into the wiring center. Again, there's a little link on the top there. The link goes across and it comes back down and it goes onto the white wire, which is on our Drayton mid position valve. If you have a Honeywell valve, you would also use the white wire. That then powers the valve and the valve moves into the central heating position. When the valve reaches its central heating position, it would then turn the boiler on. Let's just take a quick look at the wiring inside the room thermostat. Again, thermostats can be different the way they're wired in. So we have a live coming in. Now this thermostat needs a circuit to make it work. So there's a neutral and we've got a switch wire coming out on this terminal just here where it goes back to the wiring center. And again, there's a little wiring diagram on the back of the room thermostat. Now you may have a thermostat like this and it's only got two wires in it. That's perfectly normal and I'll go through that a bit further on. 
Now, depending on your wiring center, you may have a wiring diagram on the cover of the wiring center. I do really like this Drayton wiring center. It's got that nice clear diagram on it. So you can just jog your memory when you're trying to remember what wires may be. All the wires are individually wired in, which makes it much easier when fault finding. Even though there's a wiring diagram, you can't take it that the wires are in the correct place. So that's why it's really important to follow the wiring through. Just to demonstrate that, here's a traditional system. We've got a wiring center there. And then down here, we've got another wiring box. Now for me, this is all pretty straightforward because I see these systems all the time. So first of all, I'm gonna find the programmer and then follow the wiring back to the wiring center. Now, as I said before, I could wire the receiving it into the wiring center or I could wire it into the programmer because all the wires that I needed are in the programmer and also in the wiring center. Now this old room thermostat, it could be wired into the programmer or it could be wired into the wiring center. And on this system is wired into the wiring center. So that's where I'm gonna be wiring in the receiving it into the wiring center. Now I wanted to add in here that you may not have a programmer that turns your central heating on and off like this one. You might actually have a programmable room thermostat. I actually had a customer contact me about this because that's exactly what he had and he was confused about the wiring. And I'll go into that in more detail when I've finished talking about this style of system. Now, when we come to wire in our receiving it, we're always looking to wire in after the programmer or your timer. So here's our programmer here and the switch wire for our central heating is on terminal four. So we're looking to connect the receiving it after terminal four. Now the color of that wire on terminal four is brown. And if I follow that wire back to the wiring center, it comes up here into the center. It goes across the top there and down into this connection here, which is the existing room thermostat. And this is where I'm gonna wire in the new switch wires on the new receiver unit. One thing I highly recommend that you do before you go taking your wires apart is to take a photo of your wiring and get up close or even do a video so you can see exactly which wires go where. So now I know I'm happy with which wires are which. So now I'm gonna remove the old room thermostats. So my thermostat switch wires are brown and gray and they're on terminals two and three. Of course, in your wiring center, the terminals may be completely different. And I've got a neutral wire just here, and I've also got an earth wire just there. Now I'm just gonna remove one of the screws and just rotate the cable clamp around so I can get to that wire nice and easily. So now I can remove my earth wire just here. Then I'm gonna remove the neutral wire just there. Now I'm left with my two switch wires. So now as I remove these two switch wires, I'm gonna connect the new wires from the receiver unit. So I'm gonna start with heating on, which is connected onto this white wire, which is on the mid position valve. And if I follow it round, it comes to the gray wire here. So I'm gonna disconnect that gray wire like that. Now I can take my switch wire, which is on the receiver unit on terminal three. And on this case it's gray. So I'm gonna take my gray wire. I'm just gonna twist the end around to make it a nice clean finish bend it over like that, and then I'm gonna pop it into that terminal just there. In this case, it's terminal two. Do it the screw, and that's that connection now made. Give it a little tug to make sure that it's nice and tight in there. Now I can take my other switch wire, which is power on terminal one and the receiver box. And in this case, the wire is black. Clean up the end again like that, fold it over. And now I can remove the final wire from the old room thermostat. This wire is also black, but again, your wires may be completely different colors. I can now completely remove the old thermostat wire. And there we go, that's now gone. And now before I forget where I am, I'm gonna put my new switch wire into that same terminal and do up the screw. Give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. And there we go, that's my switch wires now connected. Now, all I need to do is to connect my other three wires. So we've got a neutral wire, we've got the live wire to run the unit, and we've also got an earth wire. Now, you may be wondering why I've cut this live wire really long. That's because I've got live coming in here, and that term was a bit hard to get to. Then it comes across here. We've got a wire that goes up there into this terminal block here, which is then live. And then I can easily just connect the live terminal in the top there. So that's where I'm going to put it. 
So I just do the same again, twist the wire, make a nice smooth finish, bend it over and then carefully put it into the terminal and do up the screw. Give it a little tug when I finish to make sure it is nice and secure. So that's my live wire now connected to run the receiver unit. Now I'm going to connect the earth wire. Now you may be wondering why I've left that really long. And that's because your earth wire should always be the longest wire in case the wires ever get pulled out. And then hopefully the earth wire will always be the last one to be pulled out. And the earth wire is here to protect the flex just in case it ever became damaged. So I'm going to do exactly the same again. Twist it round, fold it over, put it in the terminal and then do up the screw and give it a little tug to make sure it is nice and secure. So that's my earth wire now done. So that just leaves neutral, so exactly the same again, twist it round, fold it over, put it in a neutral terminal, do up the screw and give it a little tug to make sure it is secure. Then I just fit my cable clamp. So now I can refit the programmer like that. I can then fit the receiving it. So I just slide it down onto the backing plate like that, hinge it down and do up the two screws underneath. I don't need to do these screws up tight, just need to nip them up so they're not going to come undone. So now it's all wired in and ready to go. So I want to test that it's working and then pair the thermostat to the receiver unit. So first of all, I need to replace the fuse. So there we go, put the fuse in and do up the screw. So now I'm ready for the moment of truth, power on. So I switch the switch on and there we go everything has come on my program is on and the power light is flashing on the front of the receiver unit two quick flashes and then one second off and then i want to put my central heating on so let's select that central heating on a green light is on now but then my central heat is not going to run yet because obviously the new receiver unit is not telling the heating to come on now i can test it's all wired in properly by pressing this button here if i press that button that will now turn the heating on. So now I'm looking for my mid position valve and I can see that it's moving over, but it's a bit unclear, but that is now opening up and it's gonna turn on my central heating. So that's all good, I'm happy with that. And then I can press the button again to then turn the central heating back off again. And the green light will stay flashing for several seconds until it finally turns itself off. Now that should turn the boiler off, but the mid position valve will stay in the heating position until I select hot water. But if you have a zone valve, it will close as soon as you turn the heating off. And there we go, there's a click and the green light's now gone off. Now we need to pair the thermostat to the receive unit. So the first thing that we're gonna do is put the receive unit into pairing mode. And to do this, we press this button here for 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you can now see the light has changed to a kind of purpley color and it's flashing half a second on and then half a second off. So now the receiving it is in pairing mode. Now we need to turn the thermostat on and then it will automatically pair to the receiver unit. So all we need to do to turn the thermostat on is remove the backing plate. It just hinges off the back like that. And then we just remove the white tab like that. Just pull that out carefully. And then that will then power on the thermostat. And there we go. It says Hive on the front there now. And then it says Welcome to Hive. A little bit of technical information comes up about the receiving it. And in just a second, it's gonna start searching for the receiving it. And there we go, it now says searching, and there's a little timer counting down. Now I know that the thermostat here will connect to the receiving it in 20 seconds. And as soon as it connects, the flashing light on the receiving unit will turn to a solid green. Then you know it's connected okay. And then the thermostat is all ready to use. No Wi-Fi, no smartphone, no hub, just a straightforward thermostat to turn your heating on and off. And there we go, the lights turn green and now the thermostat is just finishing off. And there we go, it's all done. It says pairing successful and now the thermostat is all ready to be used. After a few seconds, the screen will go off like that. So to operate the thermostat, all we need to do is to press the middle button which would then light the display up and it will show us the actual temperature and it says heating off we can then touch one of the arrows to turn the temperature up and down 
Now I'm going to turn the temperature up like that to bring the heating on. You can see the temperature is rising on the front and it also says target. So that's the temperature that we're setting our room to. So there we are, I'm going to set it to 26 degrees. And then we're seeing the green light on the receiver unit come on in just a second. And there we go. There it is. The green light has now come on and now our heating has turned on. If we want to turn our heating off or turn that temperature down lower, all we do is to press or hold the arrow on the left and then the temperature will start going down. I'm going to take it down to say 10 degrees because that's a pretty good temperature as an off temperature. There we go. 10 degrees. And then we're seeing the green lights on the receiver unit start flashing, telling you that it's turning the heating off. And there we go. That's it. Pretty straightforward. The thermostat does have a couple of menus which you can go through. Then, of course, you can watch my other video, which covers all of those menus and a lot more. Now, if you're having a problem where your thermostat will not pair with receiving it, you want to try doing a factory reset on the thermostat. This is pretty straightforward. All we do is we touch the left button and the middle button and then hold those buttons for 10 seconds. You can see there's a little timer counting down and it says factory reset in, gets the zero and then it resets the unit. There you go. It says hive. Now it's restarting. Welcome to hive. We're going to get that bit of technical information like that. And then it says it's searching. And again, I know this one takes 20 seconds and it will then connect to the receiving it. Obviously, I've got the receiving it already in pairing mode. So you can see that purpley light is there flashing away. Half a second on, half a second off. Now, if you're wondering why you may have to go through this process, it's been suggested to me that the thermostat is looking for the Internet Hub. And of course, we've not installed a hub, so it's not going to find one. And now you can see that the power light has turned to a solid green and the two units are just finishing off pairing together. And any second, the screen will say pairing successful. And there it is, pairing successful. So I hope this helps you out if you're getting a problem where you can't seem to get the two units to pair together. If you do want to know about fitting this Hive mini thermostat with the hub as well, so you can then use your smartphone to set times and temperatures, then of course I made a separate video all about doing that. And of course you'll find that down in the description and also at the end of this video. Now I know everything is working properly. I can refit the cover onto the wiring center and then screw it down into position. And there we go. And then the last thing for me to do is to remove the old room thermostat. Obviously the old thermostat can come off the wall and you can do some decoration if needed. Here's a little tip for you. If you left with a hole behind your room thermostat, you can use an electrical blanking plate You can stick it to the wall and that just covers it up and makes it look nice and neat. If you want to know anything else about any of these parts, you can visit my website where I've categorized all my videos. Just before I show you those other wiring options for the receiving it, let me very quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who has bought me a cup of coffee and left a small donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos, which I hopefully help you. And finally, just to finish this video off, a couple of other wiring options. So here's our back plate for our programmer. So how do we go about wiring the receive unit into the programmer and not the wiring center? Well, it's fairly straightforward. We have our live and our neutral just here. We have our switch wire, which is just there. And of course, at the moment, it goes back up to the wiring center and into the room thermostat. Now here's our wires coming from our receiver unit. And of course, we got a live and a neutral. So obviously they would go onto live and neutral. We got our earth, which would go onto earth. And then we got our two switch wires. Then we take our switch wire in and put it onto the central heating terminal and then join the central heating wire with the switch live out on the receiver unit. So now I've wired in my receiver unit into this programmer. So here's my live and my neutral. So those are now linked up. So the receiver unit has now got power. 
I've got my earth wire to protect the flex. And then I've got my switch wire, which is going into the receiver unit. So as the power comes out from the programmer, it then goes into the receiver unit. And then I've linked these two wires with a terminal block. So that's then switched live out from the receiving unit, which is then going into the old central heating on wire, which then goes back up to the wiring center. So let's just follow the wiring through. We've got a live coming in. It then it goes across to the switch wire. It goes down to receiving it, back from the receiving it, up into this terminal here, and then back around and up to our wiring center, where it will be connected onto our motorized valve to turn the heating on. Then it's just a case of carefully tucking the wires inside and replacing the programmer and doing up the screws. Now, just a couple of notes with this method. If your thermostat is already wired in here, then you shouldn't need to make any adjustments inside the wiring center. And that's the same if you have no old room thermostat, which you are taking out. The wiring is still the same as I've just shown you. But if you've wired the receiving it into the programmer and you have an old room thermostat, which you've taken out and that was wired in somewhere else on the system, you'll need to remove those thermostat wires and replace them with a link wire like this. Otherwise your heating won't work. And here you can see I installed a link wire to complete that circuit. And it's very common for a thermostat like this just to have two wires and an earth. So I'm going to show you one last scenario just to round up this video. Now I had a customer contact me and they wanted to install a wireless room thermostat, but he was confused over his wiring. Now he had a separate timer for his hot water. That's why I've just put this piece of paper here to cover up that central heating switch. Instead, he had a programmable room thermostat like this one here. And this programmable room thermostat has batteries in it, which means it has power all the time. So you can see I've got full operation of this programmable room thermostat without the need for a power supply. When he removed that programmable room thermostat, he found he only had two wires connected. So how would you go about wiring the high receiver unit into this thermostat? Well, if you've only got two cores on earth, then you can't do it you'd have to find somewhere else to wire in the receiver unit. But if you have a three core on earth, then it is possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So here's that third wire and it's not been connected. And if you follow the wire back, you can see it's not connected here either. It's just curled up inside the wiring center. So let's just follow the wiring through so we can understand what we're doing. So we got our live coming in. So this is the mains live coming into the central heating system. And then I'll put a link wire in here. So we then we got 230 volts comes straight in here, across the top here, down the switch wire and down into the thermostat. So we've got 230 volts coming in here. It goes into the thermostat, through the switch on the thermostat, and then it comes out the other side all the way back round our switch wire, it comes up here. We've got a link wire there, bringing it back down onto the white wire, which would then be connected onto your zone valve, or in this case, the mid position valve. So here's how that wiring would look. We got our live coming in, and then I've put a link wire from live across the terminal one. So now I've got power onto the switch wire. Then it goes through the switch on the thermostat where it then comes out on the gray, where it goes back to the zone valve or the mid position valve. But importantly, I've now connected up the additional wire. So I've got a neutral wire here to complete the circuit and run the receiver unit. And of course, I've then connected the neutral wire in the wiring center as well. So there we go. I hope that makes sense. But I would not recommend using this method because you can't tell whether this wire, which runs back to the wiring center, has been cut or modified over the years in any way. And as I'd be checking the wiring inside the wiring center anyway, I might as well wire it in the receiving it into the wiring center right from the off. And then that gets rid of that old wiring, which goes down to the old room thermostat. Now, if after watching this video, it's still as clear as mud as to what wire should go where, then I really do suggest that you call a gas registered engineer to come and install it for you. 
Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my video on what's in the box, the stand options and more wiring, you can click on that link just there. If you want to watch my video on installing it with the Hive Hub and then using your smartphone to operate it, then you can click on the link just there. And as usual, you can click on subscribe, ring on the bell, share it with your friend, give me a thumbs up and a cup of coffee in my toolbox fund. It's always really appreciated. Bye for now. See you next time.